What's going on, guys? I want to show you something. It's my monitor. Um, I want to I want to do a tube swap video. In this video, we're going to swap a tube. Now, this tube is bothering me because this is a journey cabinet, but at one time it was a super basketball. Can you see the burn? And I just ugh. It bothers me. It bothers the hell out of me. You know, it would be a little more acceptable if it had a journey burn, but, you know, it's not even the right game. That's what's killing me the most. So, in this video, I'm going to go over certain things that you might need to know if you've never done a tube swap before, or maybe you have done tube swaps before. Uh, maybe, maybe this will be helpful to some of you guys. Uh, I believe there's a lot of myths that go along with tube swapping, and I believe it's much simpler than people make it out to be. So, let's get started. Well, first things first, uh, we got to remove the monitor from the arcade machine. And as you can see here, I have a Geo7 chassis, uh, Geo7 monitor, okay? And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow all wires going up, going up to the monitor. This is the RGB input. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. Here we go. I'm going to remove the ground strap. I'm going to take off the power plug. Okay, so now the monitor is separated from the cabinet. Now it's just mechanically removing it from the cabinet. There should be four bolts somewhere that I'm going to remove to pull this out. Alright, so I took the monitor out and it's sitting here. And uh, not always, but most of the time the bolts are 3 8 or 7 16 So I got my open end here, my socket driver. Just to make sure, yeah, that fits. And that fits, okay. Now, the question is, how do you know which tube is a good swap for your existing tubes? Well, despite popular, popular belief, you really don't have to go by the model number on the tube. Now, uh, that's 19VLUP22, is whatever came with this. I think that's what it was, hold on. 19 something VLUP 19 MJP 22 is what comes in the Electro Home Geo 5. Now the the number that I'm going to pull off of this is going to be different, I'm sure, you know. Uh, what's this say? I don't know if you can see that in the picture, but my number here is A48KRD89X. Okay? Um completely different number but they share as long as all right they share many of the same things now in the model number this says 19 and that means 19 inch right well in this model number it says 48 well that's actually 48 centimeters which is 18.9 you might as well say inches so in other words this is just the metric equivalent of a 19 inch tube okay so don't worry about it we're good okay now, if your tube has the same socket on the back, this is a CR23 socket, I believe. If this socket plugs into your Geo7 or whatever tube or whatever chassis you're, you're swapping tubes with, as long as that plugs in and the tube itself is the same degree. Now, when I say degree, uh, if you lay both these tubes side by side, sometimes you might see a tube that's flattened or more of a 90 degree or more of a 100 degree, this pitch right here. As long as you have the same degree, you know, as long as they both look physically the same, have that same connector. The other things um, that the model number designate, like let's say your phosphor type and things like that, are actually, for the most part, interchangeable. And when I say most part, I'm talking, um, let's say, 98 times out of 100. If that socket fits, you're good to go. And it's the same, same size tube. Now, keep in mind, um, there is some concern, okay? And the concern that some people have is X-ray radiation. Now, uh, I will tell you this. A 19-inch tube, in general, you want 19,500 volts on your anode right here, okay? Now, um, the good news is about that is um, the, the, the tubes, the screen size is directly proportional with your high voltage. 
So in other words, if you have a high voltage beyond, let's say for a 19 inch tube, let's say you have 20,000 volts going to this. There's a, there's a good possibility that you're going to emit some x-ray radiation. So, the, so as long as you're replacing it with the same size tube or larger, you should be okay. So in other words, uh, if, if, I was doing, if I was messing around doing tube swaps and I decided to put a 13-inch uh, tube on this chassis, there's a possibility that the B plus voltage will be set too high and will actually have a small amount of radiation. And that's, that's not a good thing, you know what I mean? But as long as you're replacing the same physical size tube with the same physical size tube, don't worry, okay? Now, um, <clears throat> another thing to look into is your yoke. Now, if you don't know, your yoke is this guy right here, okay? And there's wires coming off of it, and they do your vertical and horizontal um, deflection, okay? Well, I'm going to set my meter here to ohms, and I happen to know that a G05 is like 50, 55 ohms by 2 ohms or something like that. So if I have something with it, if this yoke measures something within, let's say, 10 to 20 percent of close, you know, if it's plus or minus 10, 10 maybe, maybe up to 20 percent of those values, then I could reuse this yoke on this tube. So let me see real quick. Okay, 2.7. That's close enough. and 14 so this yoke cannot be used so let's see if I could find my screwdriver now by the way these these rings I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep this simple here you have three guns in the back of your tube and these are little tiny magnets okay and and they basically basically converge those three guns to make one a finite little point on the front of your screen and that point will be deflected to, to draw the picture with your yoke, okay? Now, this, you see how I'm gonna pull this off? This is already loose on my tube here. So at the factory, they usually put a uh, some paint right across this. And if you, if you, as long as you keep that matched up, you don't have to mark the, uh, the neck here. Don't just keep that matched up, okay? I'm gonna pull this off. I'm going to remove the yoke. Okay, so now we have that out, and what I'm going to do is, since this yoke is not compatible with the G05, uh, G07 monitor, I should say, I'm going to actually put the G07 yoke onto this tube. But first, let me remove this tube from the TV. I'm just going to get all four bolts and hold this on. Out. By the way, this TV, um, I found it on the side of the road, and uh, this is this TV was made in 1999. It's a TV VCR combo. <clears throat> I don't know what brand it is. Doesn't matter that much. I will give you a tip though. Try to stay away from Sony. Often Sony will have that dual focus. To be honest, the, the a lot of the Sony tubes can be used, but you'd have to customize something here or there to make it work properly. So if you want a direct plug and play, uh, try to get something with the same socket. By the way, I discharged this already. Um, if you want to know how to discharge a tube, I'll show you in a little bit here. So let me get this last guy right here. Okay, so all four bolts are off. I'm going to follow, here's my ground up here. I'm going to go ahead and separate that. And right here is my degauss coil. Stop saying degauss, it's pronounced degauss. Okay, that's out. And I'm actually, I'm actually just going to pick this sucker up.
Okay. I'm going to pull this clear out of here now. Just sitting on an old towel. I don't want to scratch the front of the screen. Okay, so now my new tube is back here. And I don't, I mean, I can, but I can reuse this degauss coil, but I want the original one back on there. So, this is going. I will use the, uh, the I will reuse the DAG strap. This guy right here. I'm not sure what that's about. Okay, so, now, look at the original Geo 7 chassis. Now I just tilted it on its face here. Now, let me grab something and I'll show you how to discharge this real quick. Okay, so now we're here at the Geo 7. I keep saying Geo 5. This is a Geo 7. I've been working on a lot of Geo 5s lately. Uh, all I did was I got some heavy solder and, wire, and wrapped it around a uh, flathead screwdriver. And I grounded this solder to the frame, which is basically grounded to the DAG. Okay? And all you do is just stick this in here. You'll hear a pop. This is already, this is already discharged. And I like to push down on the one edge at this angle. And usually pop it up like that. But I like to hold this on here because if you do not, sometimes I'll leave it there for a while. Because uh, if you discharge, walk away and come back, it may actually recharge itself uh, from the static electricity around the tube. But okay, so this is already discharged. I know I'm good. Um, now, by the way, this tube right here I got in the trash. Now, I haven't even plugged this TV in yet. It, you know, but there's something something to worry about when you get a TV from the trash. Um, and it may sound funny, but let's say someone brought their TV to the curb. They don't care about that TV. They might throw that TV on the ground, okay? But, but when they do do that, there's a possibility that this tube may work, but will never be converged properly. Because inside the screen, there is like a screen door behind that glass, okay? And... If this tube is is uh, jolted too much, that metal screen that's supposed to be perfectly flat could have a, a little wrinkle, a little warp in it. And it's nearly impossible to fix. So if there's a possibility somebody may have dropped this tube, uh, I may not be able to reuse it. So we'll find out. It's a gamble. Uh, okay, so let me <clears throat> remove this guy. By the way, my beautiful wife, she is going to uh, rebuild this monitor for me. So, somewhere, she's gonna put a new rebuild kit in it. But okay, so, see if I can find myself a Phillips. I'm gonna do the same, same, same damn thing. I like the ones with the keys too. Nice. Okay. I'm gonna disconnect this. And I already unplugged it from the chassis, by the way. Okay, so let me sit this upright. I'm going to remove these bolts. There should be four bolts. Four bolts that hold this uh, chassis on. chassis tube in. Yeah, I can see slight, slight journey burn and like extreme super basketball burn on this tube.
I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't have minded it if it had just a little bit of journey burn, but I can't live with that super basketball burn. Okay. Let me go ahead and pull off my DAG strap. That's this guy here, goes in the neck. And... Ah, yes, I forgot. This has that. So, you know what? This one I'm going to do. I'm going to pull off the degauss coil. And we're going to reuse it on the other tube. Now, you don't have to have the matching degauss coil with your tube, but I like to. Okay, so this is out of here. Now, uh, <clears throat> it doesn't matter all the time, but I like to have the degauss, I mean, yeah, degauss, the anode button, which is this guy right here. I like to try to put the anode button in the same exact location. Now, if you want to, you can actually put the tube upside down in your chassis in it, and it wouldn't really matter. But sometimes it does matter because the wires. Oh, let's, let, let, hold on. Let me get this out of here. Get this out of here real quick. Lay it face down gently. Let's get that uh, degauss. This looks like this looks like this tube sat outside for a while. I see some rust. There's some rust on the tension strap. Okay. By the way, if you don't know what, if you don't know what a tension strap is, it's this guy right here. This is actually under tension. Depending what size tube it is, it could be several hundred to possibly, I've heard whether it's true or not, a thousand pounds pressure that this strap holds onto, it squeezes the tube. And the reason why is because the front of the tube is, is bowed out and there's, a, uh, there's this extreme vacuum inside this tube. And this actually squeezes the glass to keep the bow out, if that makes sense. Without this strap, this tube can easily be broken but with the strap, you gotta put some ass into this screen to break it. Okay, so. My beautiful wife helper. <laughs> but you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and screw this on, and then my wife is going to rebuild this chassis real quick. <clears throat> Well, my wife rebuilt the chassis. Not rebuilt, just put all new capacitors on it. Um, so, she, Kelly, yeah, she screwed down. Well, let me hook up the flyback again. A little dusty there still. Okay, the ground. And here's the yoke. Now I may need to move these uh, adjustments right here, but sometimes I can just leave it alone. We'll see in a minute here. I can't remember if it went this way or this way, but uh, whichever way it is, I may have to rotate the yoke once I have it all connected. 
I may have to rotate it, I may have to move the wedges, we'll see. Uh, okay, so let's hook up this guy. Now by the way, she just I just washed this in the sink, this whole chassis. And I mean this was literally soaking wet. Uh, it took Kelly 10 minutes to rebuild this. So I, I mean this was soaking wet a half an hour ago. And a quick way to dry this out is to put it inside a shoe box or some kind of box, okay? Cut a hole in one side, cut a hole in the other side, okay? Stick a hair dryer in it. And, and close up the box and let the hair dryer heat this up and we'll, and we'll let it run and blow hot air through it for about 20 minutes and, that, and you'll be bone dry good to go you know okay so here's my purity rings I see there's some uh, paint right here I'm gonna try to line that up but odds are I'm gonna have to move it around something like that and eh, whatever I'll adjust it. <clears throat> the cool thing is, this is these these haven't been moved yet, so I may be able to just literally turn the entire thing until I get the correct convergence on the screen. So let's hook this up and let's plug it into the machine. And what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is depending if your machine has has different monitor test patterns if if not you may have to use a test pattern generator to get a really good picture you can eyeball it but it's best to use a test pattern generator or test screens that are already on your monitor the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the whole screen to be a solid color if, if I have that option on journey I'm going to have to check it out but you want to get a solid color okay you want to degauss your monitor well it'll probably degauss itself when you first turn it on Okay, you get a solid color, and you want to move this yoke back and forth until until the whole screen is that one solid color. Then after that, you want to move this whole thing. Now, <clears throat> if uh, if you cannot find your adjustment in here, which you may not be able to with a different yoke, it's a possibility. Okay, what you want to do is you want you want to you want to mess it, mess with it till it gets as close as possible, tighten it down. Then move the fur the closest to the to the screen, move it around till the picture improves. Then move the second closest to the screen, move it around till the picture improves. And go all the way down down the line this way. Okay. <clears throat> now, you may not get it the first time around, so you may have to start back at the beginning again, and, and continue that st same procedure over and over and back at the beginning and again uh, until you get the convergence right. So, let's see if I have to do that or not. Let's hook it up to the arcade machine see what happens okay I plugged it in I rotated the yoke till now the, the, the yoke that the thing in the back grab me the yoke okay see this guy right here when you rotate this on the back of your tube you will rotate the pitcher okay and I rotated it until the pitcher looked pretty square I mean that looks pretty good uh, I also already messed with the size pots a little bit to get the right size. <clears throat> now, I have an issue. My convergence is off. That, that, that's where this uh, screen that's already built in the journey here comes in handy. Let me see if I can zoom in because the picture, the, the camera looks great, but it's not. Hold on. Okay, here we go. You see my individual red, green, and blue lines? I want that to line up. Okay, L looks like it's lining up this way, but. So what I, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grab me the other rings. This is the original rings that came off the GO7 tube. I'm going to I'm not, I'm not going to mess with the paint. I'm going to yet. I may, I may not need to, but uh, if I have to, I'll show you guys what to do. But I'm going to just rotate this and push it in and out and rotate it until this gets as close as possible. It may be dead on, dead nuts perfect, or it may be as close as I can get. So, for now, let's see where we get. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see how, how off it is. And I'm going to um, rotate it. And Kelly, tell me when we get as close as possible. Okay, we're going better this way? No, worse worse. 
Tell me when. Just keep going a little bit more. Stop. Right there? Yeah, I think so. Ooh, I just touched the Yeah, uh, don't do that. Let me see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm, yeah, it's a little... You know what? Let me it's see. Let me, let me show... Let me move the camera. It looks great there. That top. But the top right here... See how that red is separating just just a hair right there? I mean that's <laughs> that's actually pretty pretty damn good. I'm gonna let that slide. That is so damn you're never gonna notice it. Bam, that was easy. Well let me tighten that down and I feel like I need to go over this. I don't know if I really explained it very well. So I'm I'm gonna go over this again. I'm gonna tighten this down and, and I think we're good. But uh, I'm going to uh, show you show you again. I'm going to give you like a little demonstration on what I did. There it is. Let me show you. Let me give you a little example of moving us over. You know what? Let me get let me get some light. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the lights on. Oh yeah, just flip the switch. Have you hooked up? Yeah, buddy. Turn it up. Okay, this one I'm going to do. This is the tube. That came from the these original tube, okay, and <clears throat> this is the the wrong yoke, okay. But just just for an example, I'm gonna stick this on here, and this is what I'm gonna do. Tell you what, this is what you can do. Don't even put this on yet. Get yourself a solid color on the screen, okay, and you're gonna want to rotate this yoke until the screen looks square and push it down until the screen is uniform color all across now to get that done you may need to tilt the yoke this way or tilt the yoke that way or tilt the yoke this way or tilt the yoke that way and that's where these wedges come in handy um often not always but often the original wedges that were on that tube you kind of just drop it in and it's good to go kind of i got lucky over here if that's all i had to do uh, but there may be a situation where you where you may need to remove these and I use double sided sticky tape to stick them back on clean clean the tube real good where you may need to remove these entirely like this remove them all this is my junk tube you may need to find the right spot and then if you realize you have to tilt the yoke with this way or that way actually put your wedge in so it holds that way you know what I mean it'll lock it'll stay where it's at you know and I like to like to keep three in there at least minimum okay now you're mess you mess so you mess with the yoke so far to get a solid screen right well now you, you put this on okay now <clears throat> if you're lucky which I was here but it's not always that easy. If you're lucky, this is sticky. If you're lucky, I've got crap here. Let me try to pick this off. Some glue. Okay. If you're lucky, you can just put this on. Make sure you put it on the same way it came off. Don't put it on upside down. But if you're lucky, you can just move this whole thing until the picture is perfectly converged. If you are not lucky, what you want to do is you want to get this to where it's close as possible and go ahead and tighten down this screw, okay? And then you start with the with the band. These these actually slide and move. Of course there's glue on mine. But uh, you can slide these these uh, tabs right here. And you want to start with one closest to the closest to the front of the tube and you adjust it until it looks it looks as good as possible. Then you adjust the next one up until as good as possible. So let me, let me try to zoom in here. You want to adjust the ones lowest first so you get as, as, as nice as possible picture. The three colors are converged as much as possible. Then, then, then move one step up. This is the very next one besides this. And adjust that. And then adjust all the way to the end. Now, you may get lucky. I doubt it. You may get lucky and get the first adjustment, but you probably won't. Um, so then you'll have to start right back over from the very beginning move this tab and then this second tab and all the way back up until the picture is perfect now <clears throat> this could take you anywhere from 
five minutes, five minutes to a half an hour, depending how bad it is. Now, let me explain this. When you have that cross hatch that I just had, there may be a section, I kind of had a slight section on the top left hand side of the screen a little bit where the red was a little off. What you could do is, but mine was passable, I mean that was totally, totally acceptable. What you could do is, they sell these brand new, uh, to be honest I reuse them. Um, but often you'll see tubes that have these little pieces right here. And they go underneath the flyback. Uh, flyback. The yolk coil, right? Well, if you have a certain section that's a little off, you can get this. All this is is basically a piece of plastic with a little metal tab inside, okay? And that is going to uh, morph the, uh, the, the uh, magnetic flux, okay? Morph. But anyways, you want to stick this in here around the area where you think is bad and watch the screen until you fix that one little tiny spot. It may go really deep in there, it may go kind of shallow, but um, often you may see these that have, that see tubes that have multiple tabs inside there, you know? But one, one thing I like to do is, is uh, see, you may need these because your tube was, was manufactured goofy. Or you may need these because your yoke coil was manufactured goofy. And so one thing I like to do is I like to use tubes. I like to grab TVs with tubes that have zero, e either one or two of these or none of these. Because then you know you're more apt to, to uh, adjust it. And these tubes are a dime a dozen. You can get them in the trash everywhere. So, you know. Okay, so does that make sense? Get this, adjust it. Get this, adjust it. If you're, if, if you're, um, if you're not lucky, you're going to have to adjust each, in each individual ring. And then get this and adjust anything else that you cannot adjust out. Now, <clears throat> I'll, give you a, I'll give you a tip. These are garbage. You can get away with something much better than this. Um, if you happen to open up a TV set that has, well, you're going to want the original rings that went with your tube, or it'll be a nightmare, okay? You can go with or without it, but sometimes you find tubes that have uh, a, just a ring, just a ring that slips over this, okay? They're usually about this tall, and it's, um, a, well, I don't know what, the, what the, the terminology is, but it's like a, it's like a refrigerator magnet, okay? And they put it shaped like a ring. Those are the best ones. Even if you if you find one of those rings, I don't care if it's on a 27 inch, whatever it is, steal it, save it, and stick it on your tube because then you literally just have to, to, to adjust the entire thing and that's it. They're wonderful. But, uh, okay, does that, I hope that explained everything. Does that make sense? Well, um, have a good day. Please ask questions because I'm sure I left all kinds of things out. But uh, it's really not, it's not, not hard. It's not nothing to be afraid of. Um, you can do it. You can do a tube swap at home. Now, if, you know, if you really, if you don't want to worry about any of this, keep in mind, all you have to do is tear apart more TVs. <laughs> okay, because, like I said, like I said earlier, um, some of these yokes, some of these yokes are compatible with each other. So somewhere there's a TV set out there that that has a compatible yoke windings with your, your monitor. I guarantee it. Um, but yeah, so have a good one, guys. Please subscribe. Uh, let me know anything I missed. And, uh, you know, ask questions. Have a good one.